I want to thank everyone who took part in bringing last uh, night's uh, budget compromise to a successful conclusion. Um, best we can tell, only three states in America uh, that do not have oil and gas revenue raised education as we did. Only eight states in America um, without oil and gas revenue have reserves anything like Indiana still has. And as you know, the vast majority of American states have raised taxes, including several just last night, and that did not happen here. It took a lot of effort to produce a result like that, but uh, Hoosier taxpayers, I think, should be uh, enormously glad and relieved at this outcome. I really want to spend this morning, however, looking forward, because it isn't going to get any easier from here. Uh, as a matter of fact, if the legislature thinks this budget was difficult, just wait for the next time, barring a, what we can all hope for, which is a lot of good luck. This is a slide I've been showing around Indiana. It's very important for everybody to understand. These are actual results from 07, 08, and 09. We know almost to the dollar. This is the latest May forecast in 10 and 11, projecting an increase. Let us hope it is correct. As you know, for quite some time now, the forecasts have been too rosy. Um, again, in May and June, the latest forecast uh, was not achieved. It didn't miss by a lot, far as we can tell, but we're not running on the plus side. And uh, what this shows is that even if the forecast proves accurate, we'll have less revenues in 11 than we did two years ago in 2007. So incredible caution and care with tax dollars will be required. We continue to look every day. Just in the last few days, we signed a new statewide maintenance agreement that will save two and a half to three and a half million dollars a year. We have to continue to look in every corner uh, because, again, this presumes that we do get some recovery in revenue. But even if that happens, we will be dealing with fewer dollars two years from now than two years ago. So um, with profound thanks to everyone who produced a really good outcome last night, let me just say that uh, the, the work of protecting taxpayers uh, will have to continue. Um, just another comment or two about last night. Um, it is important to note that while it was a tremendous uh, victory for taxpayers, it was also a huge step forward in education reform in this state. I spoke this morning on the phone to Secretary Duncan, President Obama's Secretary of Education, and he congratulated Indiana on uh, reforms like the uh, end of the caps on charter schools, like the end to the uh, ridiculous prohibition against looking at student achievement in evaluating teachers. You might recall that it is the position of the Obama administration that any state having those policies would not be eligible for the race to the top education funding. We have now, thanks to last night's agreement, made Indiana eligible and we will pursue education grant funding to move forward. Um, I, I heard it said in floor debate, I think uh, in overheated fashion that this budget means the end of public education as we have known it, to which I say, thank goodness. We have to have change in public education. We had to end these Stone Age policies, which the Obama administration agrees with us completely on. And we have to move forward now toward better results, the kind that our kids will need to compete in this world. So in addition to um, striking a great a bargain that protects uh, taxpayers in this state, almost uniquely in America. We've done a good thing for our kids and for the future of uh, their future and our state's future. Yeah. No, no, no. What they mean is they're bureaucrats who may suffer. You know, the only reason dollars would go down to a district is that the district is shrinking. Indianapolis, for example, has shrunk 13% in the last five years, uh, demanding more and more money 
for fewer and fewer students. Um, you know, at some point, the unfairness is to the other districts, as we're, um, the districts that have made the most noise get much more per student than the other uh, school districts of the state. And that's all right up to a point. But, um, you know, let's, let's just be clear. The Indianapolis Public Schools have added 22% non-teaching positions in the last five years, while they have 5,000 fewer students to teach. So um, this really is a disagreement between advocates of children. The policies adopted in that budget last night are pro-children. They may not be pro-bureaucrat. Almost uniquely in America, again, only, I, I said three, I think we found it fourth, only four states, and they all have mineral and gas revenues. We are the only state in America without oil and gas revenue to have increased state education spending. 1.4%, as I recall, in the first year. And then the stimulus money comes on top of that. Indiana, Indiana schools are faring better than the schools of almost any state in America. And. Um, we wish we could do more, of course, but those are not the times we are in. Education is the only area in which spending was increased while we were cutting it elsewhere to make room for that. And it is not happening elsewhere. So those who uh, were unhappy with the outcome should spend a little more time Googling around and see how they'd like to live in Alabama where it's down double digits, California down 16%, or dozens of other states which did not produce an increase as Indiana did. Well, first of all, it's a huge profit center for the state. If the convention business of Indianapolis were to uh, decline or disappear, there'll be a lot less money for the people uh, in Northwest Indiana and everywhere else. It'd be probably the most senseless move we could make. Uh, and secondly, let me just say that in the much of the chatter yesterday, um, I hear this rather tired theme that Indianapolis is being favored. Nobody's more sensitive to this than I am. Now, Northwest Indiana was showered with new uh, programs, and by the way, I support a lot of these. I've been trying to get the Little Calumet flood control project done for a long time, and now we will. There's shoreline development in South Bend, a trauma center in Gary. Um, there are university capital projects all over the state. Um, people keep overlooking that the professional uh, sports Development District, that's the mechanism for uh, boosting the CIB here, was also boosted for the second time this year in Evansville. I heard complaints from, you know, Evansville and about uh, somehow nothing happening down there. A double bailout for the Evansville professional, if that's what you call it, I don't, professional development district there, one for Fort Wayne, and a, a double dip for South Bend. So. I think the legislature produced a very fair and balanced budget for the whole state. And shoring up this Indianapolis CIB means more money that can be spent and is spent everywhere else. On the other side of that issue, the mayor's office is saying that the plan doesn't fund nearly to the amount of money that they need to pump deficit to fill this. There will be a bad national priority that Republicans and mm -hmm. Democrats No, I disagree. I agree with the majority in the legislature that this was an appropriate response. <clears throat> the, the city changed its mind more than once about what it really wanted. Um, but this, uh, this is adequate. I'll just say this, I'll be here three and a half more years. I don't want to see another CIB build. It's not necessary. Um, they can do, absolutely, they can do with the uh, amount of uh, uh, assistance and revenue and tools that they've now been given. Why are you counting this as um, spending cuts for the DCC? They really don't have to cut anything. If they quit growing their spending, they'd be just fine. 
Uh, you know, the bill calls for a new board. I think they ought to have a new board. I think they ought to have new management. And this problem will be addressed very, very quickly. But just, I refer you back to the data we looked at and gathered. Look at how much less expensively equal or larger facilities are being run elsewhere in America. And the data makes it absolutely clear that uh, this can be done uh, less expensively. And they just, the question isn't can they, it's will they. Yeah, I, it might. You know, I don't. We don't object to it. I, I don't think. I don't know if we needed it or not. But it, uh, anything that uh, um, uh, presses ahead on this front, you know, I'm very much for. I've been speaking to uh, Governor Bashir in Kentucky just within the last few days again, and um, they've made. It really was up to Kentucky to uh, take a big step. They've now uh, created what amounts to a parallel uh, facility there that uh, we can work with. So I'm looking forward to at long last getting that project off the done. And they're looking at homelessness relief as a possibility for that project. Would that be acceptable? Sure. Sure. It might be the way to get it built at all. And certainly might be the way to get it built most quickly. And, you know, user, those who use a facility paying for it, it's a pretty uh, fair and time-tested um, policy. Absolutely was worth it. I don't know how many legislators are going to actually claim their per diems and so forth. I know some are not, so we don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I did a little rough math last night. By having the special session, we saved over $700 million versus April, what they were working on when things ended in April. We saved over a billion dollars from the House budget that they passed here in the special session. So. Uh, Taxpayers got a return of between four and five thousand to one against the cost of, I guess, about a hundred and fifty thousand or something like that when it's all tallied up. So, I'd rather there hadn't been one, but uh, thank goodness there was. Um, we have prevented the bankruptcy of the state. We have prevented a what would have been an inevitable tax increase like those happening elsewhere, and so it was worth the effort and it was worth the money. Well, I want to see it. Ha I want to see this done. You know, I've paddled around <laughs> Munster and other places uh, uh, for I hope the last time, and the folks up there um, deserve to be protected against this chronic problem. And I'm very, very happy. Uh, I proposed this money, as you know, uh, in in each of our budget submissions, and I'm happy that it made it. And we'll try to move forward uh, with a new commission that'll you know, stop planning and finish building the levees. Uh, well, thanks for the reminder, and we'll put it right on the top of the list. I leave that to the legislature. I, I, I think it's well worth noting, however, that there were constant predictions, daily predictions, really from the start of the regular session on, that all the lobbyists and all the money that the gaming interests would spend would inevitably finally uh, find their way into some sort of bailouts or expansion or something and zero for all their money and all their um, lobbying they got zip and i think that was appropriate Yes. I'm not going to go into more detail about this, but the uh, we've had multiple business analyses done, and um, I'm just going to tell you that there's no question in my mind that that place can be run a lot less expensively than they are talking about running it. 
and uh, they can't keep you handing out 5% a year raises to everybody, for instance. They don't need a redundant marketing department that duplicates what the um, ICVA does. And I could go on. I'm just going to say that the, uh, it is perfectly clear that they can operate with the tools the legislature has now given them, and the only question is if they will. And I, I no, no comment about it. I'm just glad that the legislature has provided the necessary tools. You'd have to ask legislators. Um, I just want to commend them for getting it done and uh, with a whole five hours to spare. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as you know, we didn't want to alarm anybody unnecessarily, but as the, as the day got closer, we had to be fair to people, too. We held off and held off, I think, three separate times before we notified state employees uh, that there might be an issue. But let's just, let's just agree that uh, uh, it was necessary to take some preparations and to give out some information in an advisory way, but that uh, thanks to the legislature, none of that was necessary, and that's quite a relief. Uh, n no, he hadn't called. Say it again. What are you concerned with that would affect the Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, just, just look at the number, Eric. That's less than we're planning to spend, significantly less than we're planning to spend in this year and next year. We're going to use some of our reserves. And um, so um, um, we will be, uh, unless there's a dr dramatically above forecast surge, which we can hope for. Please remember that uh, another thing I'm very pleased about, the education trigger I proposed in my televised speech uh, was accepted by the legislature, and that's a great thing. If there is, uh, by, by happy circumstance, above, as opposed to the below forecast receipts we've been getting, if there's an above forecast uh, revenue sometime in this time period, we'll automatically give half of it to education. And, um, uh, but let's face it, based on recent history, there's not a high percentage of that. And so even if we just meet these projections, um, there'll be a very, we'll have to make some hard decisions again if we want to stay in the black in this state. No, not necessarily. I've always supported more money for the districts that have more uh, at-risk kids or that have struggled. As always, the question is how much is enough? I do think that the ongoing practice of funding buildings and bureaucrats, that is to say sending money to schools for kids who aren't there anymore, is a little suspect. But the legislature you know, came to a compromise that that continues that practice, and um, I'm glad to sign it. That's, that's what they're there to do, really. You know, if you think back from the state of the state on, or our budget presentation on, I took exactly the same position all the way, that I was fixed on the total spending level and the protection of taxpayers against service cutbacks or an increase. And it was for the legislature to decide within that boundary. And, and so I'm not going to second guess what they've done. It, it's the product of a healthy compromise um, between folks representing all these kinds of districts. But going forward, what should the state I think ultimately we ought to fund children, not buildings or um, administrations. And I am for 
uh, additional spending, significant additional spending for the districts that have high numbers or percentages of special ed kids or um, low income kids or kids who otherwise um, need extra help. Always strongly for that. Can I uh, thank the legislature while we're at this? They whittled it down, but they did include funding for an expansion of our Woodrow Wilson Fellows Program. That's math and science teachers, people of proven excellence in math and science who are gonna go into these very schools. It is aimed at exactly the schools you're asking me about. And we're gonna try to flood those schools with the best math and science teachers in America as fast as we can. And this, another of the positive pro-children measures they voted for last night was that. Maybe. I said at the time we signed the bill that it was uh, uh, far from perfect. Um, and given the state of the national economy, it, every, here and everywhere, these, these uh, uh, unemployment trust fund issues may get worse before better. Um, there, at some point, I've said this, I said this at the time, we'll have to do more than was done in that bill. How I feel is not very important. I think taxpayers should be very relieved. And I think really Hoosier citizens should feel good about their General Assembly at this point and about the status of government in Indiana. Just take a look around this country. We are the only state that is solvent in the way we are, that isn't raising taxes, that is adding anything to education except for a handful. The only state that doesn't have, isn't sitting on oil and gas. And that hasn't been easy, and it's taken a lot of good work by a lot of people. So I just want to give them the credit and, uh, and invite the public to feel a little relief if that's appropriate. I don't know. We, uh, uh, I hope we make more for forward progress next year. Um, we'll be back with local government reform. And we'll have to talk about exactly which aspects and um, uh, visit with proponents, visit with adversaries, see if we can find a way to um, move forward there, as we just did on education reform, for instance. Um, we, uh, you know my view, we should never ever skip an opportunity or a session, short or long, in Indiana to try to make positive change. And um, we'll be thinking about that starting right away. Governor, the uh, budget is allowed for a uh, P3 at a Gary Airport. Yeah. Any idea what that might affect, or is solid one secondary to getting a more viable medical system? I think both are important. Um, and I think this may well be the only way to achieve either goal. Um, timing now is not the best. This is something I really wish we had acted on two or three years ago when we know that there would have been uh, a lot of avid interest. Uh, look at the, uh, what, what Chicago was offered for Midway, very different place, but still gives you some sense that there was a lot of interest not that long ago. Right now might be tough, but maybe next year will be better. I think it was a very positive step to at least uh, create the possibility. You know, when, when you're trying to solve problems like that, and when you're trying to get bridges built at Louisville, you ought to, you ought to open up every option that might get you there. And I think the legislature was wise to, to do both those things. Well, we prepared because that's our job. Um, but I really never thought we'd finally come to that. I thought there was the will, and, and I thought it was, it began to become clear over the weekend that people on both sides were finally ready to um, get serious. And, and again, I want to commend them for, 
for doing it. It was a good pro process of give and take. There are things in there for everybody to uh, feel uh, pleased about and everybody to um, disagree with. But um, I guess that while we prepared because that's our duty, um, uh, I, was, I was pretty confident we'd, based on what we were hearing, that we'd get, it, we'd get through it. Sure. No. <laughs> no, because be, because it, it's the nature. It, it's it's it, that's appropriate. That's appropriate. You know, uh, this budget had in the end a pretty good bipartisan support. A third of uh, at least House Democrats and, the, and a few on the Senate side voted for it. So, to to achieve an outcome like that, you. You not only have to accept, but really welcome the fact there'll be things you don't think are uh, good policy or necessary spending of tax dollars. I mean, you know, I would like to have spent something less than we finally did, had more protection for the future, but um, this was about trying to come together, and, and I'm just you know, pleased and grateful to all those people who finally did take part. I don't know. We'll get back to you. I, I have no comment for the moment. Okay. No, they, they'd be one-time grant uh, funding, and we'll be talking with Tony Bennett about what to go after. But you know, new innovations and experiments in education. Uh, I hope we'll make a significant application for new tech high schools. We've talked about those before. I think they're working well. Um, that, that'd be an example. Might try to get some support for even more of our Wilson fellows. Uh, but uh, um, it's, it's meant for one-time uh, purposes, and that's, that's what we, at least now we are eligible, thanks to last night. Thanks.